is listening already. I'm going to translate this introduction. This year we didn't have a summer miracle, but a kind of a drama. The first time since 50 years, journalists were indicted for high treason. That's, that has been part, that's a few months ago now, and we would like to use this opportunity to, to reflect what happened, um, look back uh, and look at the backgrounds, but also look what's happened since the actual event, what the consequences will be. So in order to do that, please welcome very warmly the founder of Netzpolitik.org, our favorite tra tra traitor, Markus Beckedahl. For all our international guests, if you want to listen to the talk in English, that is totally possible. Please turn, tune in to our wonderful translation at 8011. Thank you. Yes, please do. Hi, good morning. Well, if you keep clapping the whole time, I won't go get forward with 72 slides. <laughs> well, <laughs> that worked well. <laughs> André, can leider nicht hier sein. Uh, André can't be here with us. He has to get some sunlight in the actual sun, in the real world one. At the camp, we uh, straight after the uh, um, after the investigation was crushed, we did report. So the history of the, all those investigations I'll, very touch, I'll touch upon very briefly. Uh, more focus on findings, what laws will need to be changed to prevent investigations like that in the future. If you are interested in the whole events, the camp talk is online, of course, and of course free to download. The story started a year earlier. Last year, we were celebrating 10 years of Netspolitik.org, and at that birthday, we heard that the chancellery um, had threatened the members of the investigating committee of the NSA uh, scandal with uh, criminal investigations because documents had been leaked uh, that uh, were that had been leaked via that Bundestag investigating committee. Now, this procedure was not followed. There was a rumor that Merkel, the chancellor, was against it, uh, being afraid of bad press if you would be, if you took steps against press, which um, motivated us to continue. And we were happy about that. In February this year, we published extracts from the budget of the, uh, of the Interior Secret Service uh, the Verfassungsschutz, uh, which made clear that the service was planning evaluating internet content, which was interesting because two years after the, the Snowden revelations, the answer of our government was to simply give our secret services more money to survey and monitor the internet. We thought that it would be nice to debate this, discuss this before it would happen, but the discussion was, was only possible if the documents were visible in the open. They had been classified, they had been leaked to us, we had space on our server, so we published them. Not didn't get the huge society, society debate that we were interested in, um, but it is part of our philosophy to, philosophy to not just have documents and quote from documents, but also, if possible, to hand them to all our readers. We are from the internet, we are used to linking to our sources. And we are used that other people can question our work critically, and we don't believe that um, we are the very experts on everything. We think that our readers contain many experts that can help us look at documents from different perspectives, and for that you need the original sources, which is why after careful deliberation in each individual case, we put them online if we don't threaten anyone, if, they're, if they're not a hazard to anyone. So back to, the, to early this year, in April, we got a new budget, which we also put online, which unfortunately nobody in, at all was interested because, uh, in because it went online at about five past nine and at quarter past nine, in the reintroduction of data retention, telecommunication data retention was announced by a justice minister, which completely killed the other topic, which was sad because we did want to talk about 
what our Interior Secret Service is doing, whether that was compatible with the Constitution. They are, do call themselves protection of the Constitution to discuss whether we like this and whether our constitutional court maybe should judge on the admissibility of, of, of doing such a thing. So just to put in context what we did there, these were budget plans, which some people say is comparable to well, cost structure and cite online uh, large newspaper. Uh, published another puzzle um, puzzle piece, uh, some documents on X key score and what the Interior Secret Service wanted to do with that. We had the budget plans around the introduction of X key score and the other jigsaw piece uh, came from, I think I can't pronounce his name correctly anyway. On the 4th of July, we heard from a radio news service that, uh, that two articles had been published uh, that led to a communal investigation started uh, called for by the president of the Interior Secret Service. Now, interestingly, a new law for that service extending its rights had passed the Bundestag only a few days ago, which maybe was connected. Um, maybe someone in at that radio station um, decided to to release this at that time. Maybe there would have been more eyes on that law if that plan had, if, if that had been published a bit earlier. Um, so we noticed that it was probably us that were meant by this, and then we then wondered, is that a thing that happens more frequently? We called journalists' unions, thought that they would know about this, and uh, thought that maybe the 90s was the time that this last happened, and we found this kind of strange. And that very Monday, we called the state prosecutor, but they didn't want to tell us anything. And what we then did is to blog about the whole event and wait what would happen. Uh, after that article in, at that radio station, it was about uh, releasing uh, professional secrets, which um, it would have been bad for our sources if we had been investigated, but we would have been okay. Uh, on the 30th of July, then, there was a, a letter that um, that kind of disrupted our everyday procedures. Uh, uh, the state prosecutor told us that there was invest an investigation against Andre, myself, and our sources um, since mid-May. So, okay, we thought challenge accepted. Mm. That's what we blocked about this as well, and then we looked at what treason actually means. Uh, it's in the crim in the penal code. And uh, our lawyers thought, this is kind of strange. The code says there has to be an intention to uh, threaten the state. Um, we want a better uh, Germany, one where our fundamental laws are actually enforced, which is kind of the opposite of what treason means. And we thought, well, if that's what the, what the law says, we will fight this. And then we informed ourselves, where does this come from? We, this sounds like a thing from old 1960s affairs. The Spiegel magazine had a very famous affair about high treason or country treason. It's a very loaded term. And the short, long and short of it was we had the letter on Thursday, put it online. Sunday, we are in the midst of a state crisis. Tuesday, uh, the state prosecutor resigns, and, and a few days later, the whole thing is quickly buried. But that's when things start. All the things that happened there and the way we evaluated it. We were quite, quite lucky, actually, because um, they were investigating, investigating us for treason, uh, symbolism here. Uh, the picture of the old minister that started the proceedings against Spiegel magazine, Franz Josef Strauss, a uh, very conservative politician from the 60s or the 90s. So if they hadn't used paragraph 94, but 95, which is a revelation of state secrets, um, the hashtag would have been much longer then. So we were kind of lucky that that wasn't used. We were also lucky that they had actually informed us by letter as far as we could reconstruct. Uh, it looks very much like the state prosecutor had called for an external expertise by a professor close to the 
Secret Service, the other Secret Service, BND, uh, who then believed that we had actually published state secret, and if that had, and, but the, the professor said that he hadn't finished his expertise and had to go on holiday, but had he finished, we probably would have heard about it by uh, being searched. Uh, our houses and our editor's office. So we understood from that that we should be prepared. We can't assume that in Germany, a uh, state under the rule of law, we would expect, we had to expect having a house and offices searched and houses. Uh, now we know and now we're prepared should it ever happen. Then we were lucky. It's a David against Goliath kind of scenario. Yeah, in this new Star Wars age, um, we, we, we are the rebels, uh, the ministers are the, the emperor, em, emperors, so fantastic symbolism here. We were lucky, and we've had a kind of stress test six years ago when there were internal documents by German railways which we published, where we could kind of see the mechanisms of new publicity, stress and effects and these things. Uh, we could test those, and now we could do the same thing on a larger scale. And the biggest luck we had, we were in the midst of the, well, the summer hole, as it's called in Germany. Before that, the Greek crisis would have dominated us, after that, the refugee crisis, but at the exact, ti exact time that we had this letter, nothing was happening. So, thank you. <laughs> But we had to prove first that we are good citizens, and finally we had won a competition, Germany Land of Ideas. The government awarded us um, uh, several institutions, German government, Federation of German Industry. We were a, an awarded base of ideas. So what should we do with this award? We thought, should we publish it? And that was now the opportunity to do that. There was a somewhat schizophrenic scenario happening here. We've just been recognized by the government, but and then there's another kind of recognition, but on another level. Interesting. So in any case, um, something happened that we could have foreseen, but didn't. The admin was on holiday. The blog was gone. Uh, we, need, we needed a mirror page to just keep the information online because we had a DOS attack basically by all that interest. And suddenly I wasn't able to use Twitter anymore because there was such a lot of information with our hashtags and uh, my browser simply kept crashing and I had to switch off for a while. But there was a huge uh, level of solidarity, um, fantastic tweets by nine quarterly, trust is good, treason is better. Uh, and lots of links to our donation page, because we had the problem, it, had, had we had to fight this through, we would have needed a lot of money for all the lawyers, and at that point in time, we were completely underfinanced, and uh, so um, we had the funny situation that our, our international bank account number became a trending topic as a hashtag, actually, uh, which made our bank fairly proud as well. Just to illustrate what we call the summer hole, the, that's, there, this was one of many days at Tagesschau.de, the website of the main state news broadcaster. Uh, so nothing else was seen for a while on that site. And an another thing, uh, a lot of solidarity from, from state broadcasters, ZDF. Um, they had that netspolitik.org domain inserted into their news coverage. And then the server was gone as well. But we have a new one now. So if something like this happens again, we can actually carry a bit more load, deal with that. So we had to become even better citizens. That's them imitating the famous gesture by Chancellor Merkel in that image. Um, and then the whole press uh, largely was on our side and supporting us, which we had hoped. But at that level, this huge amount of solidarity we did not really expect, and that was fantastic, all that, all those people are having our backs, and, and uh, the things that we look at suddenly is a report about you, that's a strange feeling. Uh, the only sad thing was that we were in the midst of that summer hall because there was no broadcast by some popular satirizing news programs. There was a kind of uproar from conservative um, 
members of parliament who didn't quite understand the, the whole solidarity. The top one there is the president of the Committee for the Digital Agenda in the Bundestag in the German parliament. So that was about one day people that had something to say in the conservative parliamentary party had their parties under control, their, their people under control, and, and told them, we cannot win this game, stop uh, arguing this case. And Bosbach, a very Vernon conservative interior politician, um, so as un understandable as the crushing of the investigation is, he then started an attack on, on the Social Democrats. So that was a, a signal to us that the government was starting their withdrawal battle. Not everyone had understood that. Hans-Peter Uhl, very well-known hardliner, still thinks that ISIS terrorists uh, would, would be able to read from those budgets how the Interior Secret Service would uh, act. But he has a few other problems too anyway, so. Well, anyway, the other thing that was very convenient, it was summer. We had a couple of people from our team who wanted to do a demonstration. Well, we thought, no, nah, that's the usual people, but we did it with a demo of two and a half thousand people, which was very helpful. Um, you can see the reason on quotes, to generate, just to generate images. Well, we thought after today's well, it's all over. Akamazo, Minister of Justice, had to stop his is holiday and it, and the media meant oh it's all fine carry on carry on well uh, we were partying and the next day we were in a, in a in a scandal involved in a scandal what indeed it became international we had to say that well germany used to be the sort of moral highlight in the international area to, to pointing at areas where uh, internet bloggers or journalists were being repressed well and suddenly there was a case where in germany people journalists were being trying to be threatened using the treason where normally our exterior ministry would, would immediately have intervened that was quite funny for us everywhere we were visible in from nepal to greece well in all continents all countries we we got we got these pictures we 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 weren't even able to process all of them but the whole day the telephone was ringing everyone wanted to know from us the, the craziest media from ever and suddenly we were, we were in the, on the titanic the satirical uh, satirical blog and then yeah suddenly culminating in this in this uh funny news line and then the uh, the, front, the the highest media the fz decided to campaign against us well that's funny well how can such a newspaper to campaign us if if they start with one bad article after the other why we are the bad guys and not the good guys and then using such words as the, this just block word as like area controls or the rule of law and and these people were the role was always inf irrelevant see data retention see etc or or the or if the uh, head of the page 3 talks about uh, talks talks about a mascot for about half a page what what, what mascot we, we never even noticed that that was that, that thing was even in our office anyway it was funny but on the other hand we but it was very odd very very strange the it's weird that the the, the this poli these politicians are normally on exactly the the opposite side of the aisle, and normally point at us and say, "Those are the activists, and we're the journalists." Well, they try to sort of um, disclaim the fact that we are allowed to use journalists. We are, we've we've done this several times, where we know that this that we are, we have a official confirmation because they gave us badges that we are in fact journalists. Then we had an, uh, we had another sort of side area, side, side channel. Well, we had a, we had a, we had to kick out a team from Russia today. The only people who didn't sign up, and suddenly were in our, in our office and, and started filming. Well, we thought, well, that was a bit weird. We we don't talk to official media who are trying to instrumentalize us, in order to, um, in order to relativize the um, limitations that the journalists have to suffer under in their country, we said we will not talk to sort of government-run media whose countries repress journalists or who threaten journalists with their lives. Or we tweeted that as well, and suddenly we are all the conspiracy theorists. We also already had that as a sort of separate fight. We haven't suddenly we we had a lot we had a, we had a lot of death threats because suddenly I, I was I was responsible for the Ukraine conflict or because I was in the, in the green young greens movement when I was 13. Well, I, I don't know I don't know if somehow we we got a lot of well. 
But let's move on to this this mystery mystery X X Y room. We keep asking ourselves why, why, why did the Attorney General start this investigation? If but even if it was obvious to everyone that this intention to damage the Republic was, was not present, it's obvious. The only explanation we have is that there was some kind of political pressure from the part of the Interior Security Ministry, from the part of the Interior Ministry, or maybe from the Chancellery. Well, the question is, why was, does nobody want to be responsible? Well then, the other thing that wasn't clear, or the, the other thing which became clear afterwards, well, as soon as we hear hear about this treason, this treason about revealing secrets, well, they they were investigating against our sources, and they referenced uh, the, the the ruling from 2007. In 2005, there was a search at the Cicero, which is a magazine, a monthly magazine. Following that, because it was related to there was some tr some reve revelation of secrets or state secrets, and at the time, the Federal Criminal Bureau, together with uh, Oscar Schilly, the Interior Minister tried to s search and seize uh, evidence about the sources. The um, High Court said in 2007, um, due to this is not a sufficient basis for this kind of searches. And um, with us, they tried they tried it even a level higher. Well, if the one thing was being, uh, was, was, was being uh, ruled as unconstitutional by the High Court, we try, let's try the next level up. Well, we would have liked to fight this all the way to get another ruling well, unfortunately, they dropped them very quickly, so we didn't get the opportunity to to have it clarified in front of a court and to make it clear that we were in the right the whole time. Then we had Hans-Georg Maaßen, uh, the president of uh, in the Emperor, 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 as mentioned earlier, the Interior Secret Service. Ori mentioned it on the 4th of May. Ori announced it on the symposium of the Inner Secret Service, where the... Um, where, the, where the aforementioned journalist was allowed to uh, moderate, which uh, was the first person who, who dropped hints about this. He already met, meant at the time that, that, that our work or this kind of leaking, uh, leaking journalists like us was seriously damaging to the work of these secret services. And furthermore, he mentioned that there was, there was secret additional information that was being printed. Well, we don't have a print, so we all put it in the internet, but well, well anyway, it doesn't matter. Or we used that as an excuse to come out with another series of stickers, which you can get uh, at the front here afterwards. Netspolitik.org threatens the work of our secret services. The other thing that was very interesting was that Maaßen tried to like uh, get out of it. it, was to be like, is he innocent? He was just doing his duty. Someone had to do it. The sort of in the last few years, there have been three indictments due to uh, the revelation of secrets or leaking of documents to journalists from the side of from the secret service. And there were three, and two of us directly against us. Well, this the f exterior secret service has not done this. Well, he said, well, that's completely normal. He was suggesting that it was a very super normal process and that he had nothing to do with it. Well, because the indictments were against an unknown person. Well, we, well you know, when we got the indictments, um, well, that's what they look like. Well, just to sort of, as a sort of wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Well, they, the, these sort of uh, indictments against an unknown person had our names. So the, uh, by the way, the internal secret service managed to misspell my name twice in two different indictments. Fortunately, there's no, no, no person in Germany that is, has a similar name to me. But the problem was, though, what does it mean if you're suddenly, if you're being, uh, uh, being sus suspected because you have an own name. Well, okay, our lawyers later become be became the censored, became the censored uh, file, got the censored, uh, only got the censored files. Well, we assume that the files were were being created in parallel. So there are several notes about mm, uh, chats between the um, the secret ministries by via email or via by telephone, but they were not wished. That was ve seemed very weird to our lawyers. But we would have liked to publish the uh, files because the, we are not allowed to see them because they're more apparently the files are more secret than the documents that we published apparently. 
since because, because the Internal Secret Service had to explain the Attorney General uh, in a report why indeed we s reveal them, and indeed this report is more is more secret than the actual documents they published. Well, it's, it's, it's weird. The bizarrity is incredible. Well, then, well, we realized, oh, oh, just in general, uh, just for heights reason. Well, they could have been listening to us for two or three months. That was all within the realm of possibility for a few moments. We, we thought, what's what's happening? All right, for well, a few moments, we thought, all right, we could have a problem if they've like put bugs everywhere. Well, they, they, they said later on, they said, oh, the Federal Criminal Bureau only had a very low level of investigation. Well, we could, oh, we can trust them, maybe. But the problem is, how how, ver how verifiable is the uh, the statement that the Internal Secret Service has not been checking us? Well, in, you know, if there are side effects, well, ask the, the we're victims of the uh, Nazi scandal. <laughs> then we had the problem, various representatives of the government well. We didn't quite say the truth to the representatives of the media. For example, the Harbour, the Secretary of the Interior, well, the President of the Secret Service uh, at some point told us the intention, or well, we didn't do anything else. Well, later on, we, it was discovered that the Interior Ministry was obviously knew about it, and they also knew us about the charges. Thomas de Maizière, the Interior Ministry, obviously didn't know anything about the, uh, at the site. The, um, the, the, charges, the charges against these, these uh, uh, perpetrators was only got a sort of um, official system after the, it became into the media. Well, this is the system, Demis. Um, just uh, as a fun fact, the the, the husband of uh, Emily Haber was was the guy who was being uh, surveilled as part of the NSA uh, with the selectors. Then there was a whole the, the massive press conference on the, on the Monday after we published it for a whole hour, loads of questions. Well, then the. Um, this, the uh, press representative of the, BND, of the Secret Service said he talked to all the people who would be relevant. No one knew anything. This is awesome, awesome rhetoric, rhetoric i.e. it's just um, a, a, a obfuscation tactics. Oh, later on in the April, somehow they knew about these, the Chancellor knew about that they knew the plans and we assume that they already talked about the strategy. Who took part in this? Well, unfortunately, we don't know. We, 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 they don't, you know, list who the participants are for these important meetings. Well, then the um, parliament asked all the individual ministries who was there, and several ministries were, were able to answer that their secretaries had indeed been there. Well, it would have been possible to tell us, but no one really wanted to be responsible for it. Furthermore, we asked the, the Green Party. The uh, Green Party asked if it was normal that these, that these sort of intention that these. Uh, these were being only mentioned on the side. These important things, the the, uh, the, the, the government meant. Oh, yeah, it's super normal. That, that's super normal. Don't don't panic. Finally, the J Ministry of Justice knew two months two months earlier, including the uh, minister who uh, later on said, "Well, we had to we had to like uh, terminate this immediately." Oh, apparently, it turns out that, 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 that later I have to speed up. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, what is happening? All right, I need a new notebook. <laughs> All right, what can we learn from this? All right, first, we need a new definition of a, a, a secret. At the moment, the the government gets to choose what the ent official entities get to choose what is a secret. We need a new definition that says that the contemporary happenings that are of uh, current that are of public interest are not secrets, that they cannot be c covered by the articles on state secret. This would help journalists a lot not to be currently threatened by this sort of Damocles. We need we need a law protecting whistleblowers that actually deserves the name. Apparently, we're still a third world country as far as whistleblower protection is concerned. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I'm carrying up. All right, what's going on here? Furthermore, we had we're lucky, Andre and Mia. We are. We are, you know, we're employed, we have, we have journalists, but we have other people who are volunteering for us. If they had, had this, written the same story, they would have not had as many, many rights as for us. For, exa for example, they would have not had the right to stay silent. They would have had to, first of all, fight for it in front of the court in order to uh, uh, clarify. This is by, you know, it's based on the employment, employment. We say that the freedom of press should be for everyone who follows the official decrees and rules of uh, 
journalists and not just for the people who are making money off of it. Anyway, furthermore, in order to, to protect our sources, the data retention needs to be gone. There, for there are many other reasons to, to get rid of it, but f from a journalistic point of view, this is why. And there should be a new, should be a new uh, law against um, selling of data. Furthermore, we need to exit mass mass surveillance, and we need we need to have a check on secu uh, secu safe se secret services. Well, uh, it's incredible that two years after Snowden, they they think about you know just expanding it. For the other thing we want to say: don't give up. We carry on. Despite complete surveillance and everything else, we're, it's, a bit, it's a bit a shame that the campaign ended, ended so so quickly. We had a lot of ideas, but we happily accept documents. And as a thank you for for the whole investigation, we um, we um, published the whole the strategy that the Secret Service has in terms of the expanding uh, surveillance. That's the exterior Secret Service. Uh, it's a bit complicated. We were talking about the interior one most of the time. Uh, and it, furthermore, thank you very much for helping us. It helped us really a lot to receive all the support. I heard from other media, other communities. I don't think we would have survived it as, as well. Well, if you think our work is good, then you can donate to us, nespolitik.org slash spenden. Or we have a few like d cool t-shirts and hoodies and cool bags there somewhere. All right, over there somewhere. There are also stickers with Hans Gelmarsen. Anyway, thank you very much. Commit more treason and thank you. Have fun at the Congress.